Welcome, crypto fam, to the number one daily Bitcoin pod. In today's show, I'll be sharing the latest astrology for the broskies as we do each and every day. And quoting Max Kaiser, I was the very first to predict Salvador and Bonds would trade at a premium back in August of 2022. And he shares the receipts. No one thought this was possible. That's right. We'll also be discussing Bitcoin traders see 54,000 price bottom or lower amid the ongoing Middle East tensions. I'll be breaking this down for you. We'll also be discussing Bitcoin ETF see the biggest outflow in a month as the Middle East tensions surge. And speaking of Bitcoin ETFs, their cumulative inflows are now over 45 billion, the fastest growing in ETF history. We'll also be discussing stablecoins now 43% of the sub Saharan Aaron African Crypto TX volume, according to the latest report by Chainalysis. We'll also be discussing crypto analysts says Bitcoin due for a breakout after successful macro price retest. I'll be sharing his outlook and his timeline. We'll also be discussing Bitcoin to 90,000 per coin within the next 60 days if it mirrors this trend. We'll also be taking a look at the overall crypto market. All this plus so much more, yo, in today's show. Uh, if you're new to the channel, very important to smash the likes, go ahead and subscribe, then hit that bell icon, turn on all notifications, that way you get notified each and every day when I go live. Today is pod episode 1775. I'm your host, JV. It's October 2nd, 2024. Let me rephrase that. It's October 2nd, 2024. Yesterday did not go up, but we still got a whole month ahead of us, so let's freaking go. I'm already calling for new all-time highs, price discovery mode, this month of October, 100K, six-figure milestone, sometime Q4. Let me know if you agree, disagree with that. Let's kick it off with our market watches we do each and every day. We got Bitcoin down 0.8%, maintaining above 61,700 at the time of the live. We got Ether down 2%, trading under 25 hundo. We got XRP at 58 cents. We got Solana, 146 bones. And we got Sue and Tron, barely in the red. And checking out coinmarketcap.com. The current crypto market cap, it's at $2.16 trillion, so it's back on the decline. We have the Bitcoin market cap at $1.2 trillion. And uh, checking out the volume, roughly $106 billion worth of volume past 24 hours, up 12% on the day. And checking out the Bitcoin dominance, 56.6% back on the climb as the Ether dominance steady on the decline, all the way down to 13.7%. And checking out the Tile 100 crypto gainers past 24 hours, Joe. We got Wormhole up 26%. Conflux up 9% and Sue up 7% below that mantra in the Pith Network. Let me know which alt, if any, your bullish on for the bull. Holla your boy. And checking out the crypto bubbles. We get a visual perspective on the day. I'd say yeah, it's like 50-50 out there overall. 50% of the market in the green, 50% in the red. Zooming out on the monthly, we'll get a broader perspective. Safe to say 90% of the market in the green and pumping. Some impressive gainers. Uh, Hex up 261%. Sue up 150%. Tau up 96%. CKB up 100%. A uh, lot of big gainers overall. And checking out the Crypto Greed and Fear Index. Today, we're back in fear at a 42. Yesterday, a 50. Last week, a 59, and last month, a 26. And checking out the time chain calendar as the crowd continues to go wild, cheering, let's go, JV. Uh, we have 186,000 blocks until the next halving, April of 2028. We're currently on block 863,834, but who's counting? Minus the time chain calendar and us every day. Checking in with the stats. How many stats can you get? How many stats can you stack on the dollar? Today, 1,630. 630. 30 sats per USD. Uh, let's break down the latest technical analysis and actually also pull up some of the live charts. Uh, headline here reads, Bitcoin breaking 74 Gs will take time as Bitcoin structure is moving to neutral. And uh, yeah, let's break this one down. Uh, the Bitcoin chart structure is still struggling to break into bullish territory and a retest of 73.8 all-time high may take longer than optimists hope, according to some analysts. Uh, quoting Willy Woo here, structure midterm is bearish. Moving to neutral and trying to get bullish. All-time high will take time. 
So he said the short-term structure of Bitcoin signals that the next one to three weeks may be cooling off period before the next bullish attempt. I don't think we get October, sideways October and November, December for the laser eye parties, wrote Willie Wu. And according to TradingView, the Bitcoin price was 61200 at this time, down roughly 4% since yesterday. Uh, Bitcoin's price declined following major missile strike by Iran, reportedly targeting sites across Israel late October 1st. Israel's air defenses shot down most of the 180 incoming missiles, according to the local reports. Meanwhile, Crypto Greed and Fear Index brought us back into the fear territory with a 42. Now, crypto trader Rec Capital pointed out that while Bitcoin has dropped into the 60,000s multiple times this year, people become equally fearful on the pullback and for a different reason every time. Uh, Bitcoin's almost 4% pullback triggered liquidations of around 128 million in long positions, according to the latest data. This comes after Bitcoin surged 25% in 21 days days, hitting 66,300 September 27th, before consolidating and retracing towards 60,000 in the following four days. Still veteran trader Peter Brandt said that the recent Bitcoin rally did not disturb the seven-month sequence of lower highs and lower lows. And uh, only a close above 71,000 confirmed by the new all-time high will indicate that the trend from the 2022 low remains in force, according to Peter Brandt. So there you go, yo. And quoting the high priest of Bitcoin, Max Heiser, and he got some receipts to back it up. I was the very first to predict Salvadoran bonds would trade at a premium back in August of 2022. No one thought this was possible. And you can see the tweet, August 18, 2022. El Salvador sovereign debt will soon be trading at a premium. The new volcano bonds will start a cycle of ratings upgrades for El Salvador too. Back when everyone was laughing at Bukele and Max is the profit. He saw it well in advance. And uh, checking out some of the live charts, uh, we'll go over on Trading View. This is live and in the flesh on the one hour. Let me switch up the scene so it's so fresh and so clean. As you can see here, again, live and in the flesh via Trading View via Coinbase. You can see the one hour chart. We did get some a big sexy green candle. Um, it looks a little earlier, but we got some followed by a red. Uh, we don't have any particular targets, so let's zoom out uh, to the four hour chart. The four hour chart shows us. Uh, we do have a blue target sitting above $81,300. That's looking lit. And uh, yeah, let's go. I think this is in play here for October personally. Uh, let's check out the one day chart. As we can see right here, one day chart shows us two very bearish big red candles and an itty bitty one. Uh, but we're forming a green one here for today for staging a little recovery. But we do have a target you need to be aware of sitting down at $47,000 on the daily chart. Let's check out the weekly. We still should have that sexy cup and handle pattern sitting all the way at $124,000. $200, and that's the weekly. And we'll zoom out one more. Outlook here on the monthly. Uh, monthly, you can see uh, we're in October, historically very bullish fourth quarter of roughly 88%. We'll see how it goes down. And even September, which is historically very bearish, closed in the green. We had roughly, I think it was a 7 or 8% gain on the month for the month of September. So there you go. And again, welcome anyone and everyone just joining the stream. Uh, shout out. Wow. Grant Noakes, $100 tip. Next level G-ish for JV. Thanks for what you do and for helping us all. Thank you, brother. That's very kind. It's very rare to get $100 uh, supers. So I greatly appreciate and respect you. Uh, thank you, Grant. Honored to be here. It's my pleasure. I do this. It's all about service to others. Uh, it's all about spreading the orange pill to the masses, letting people know there is a better way. We save in Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the most appreciating asset in human history. Let's not get it twisted. Let's not compare Bitcoin's price performance of only based on October 1st of 2024 Let's look at the inception since the Genesis block of January 3rd of 2009. How many hundreds of millions of percent is Bitcoin up? That's my question for you guys. But let's continue with the news. Next story, eh? All right, next headline. Uh, well, we discussed not only the bull scenarios, but also the bearish. So, for, for example, I'm going to be sharing with you a $54,000 bottom could be in play, according to some of these analysts. Let's break it down. Uh, Bitcoin traders see 54000 Bitcoin price or lower amid this Middle East tension with the ongoing war. Uh, let's break it. Market nerves over events of the Middle East have more than made themselves felt in crypto. The latest data from TradingView shows the total crypto market cap dropping 7% over the past couple of days. You see the big red 
red candles uh, on the daily. Big ex or Bitcoin expresses reaction to the turmoil in classic style, nearing 60 G's support before reversing. Still, some traders say the worst is yet to come. Quoting them here, volume going up and price going down usually signifies a strong downtrend. Uh, more confluence for my idea that we will revisit 55 to 57,000 area before a potential reversal. Regardless, we'll be looking for long setups along the way. Such levels have not been seen on Bitcoin in two weeks, but even lower targets are now in play. For popular trader Tony Guinea, there is that a prejudice term? I'm Italian. I take offense to that. There is re there is reason to believe that Bitcoin will not only break 60,000, but 54,000. Quoting him here, I said Bitcoin will make the bull trap above 58 G's, summarized, uh, predicting a bearish month for October. Now, also reported previous expectations had overwhelmingly favored major gains this month, with October on average seeing 23% Bitcoin price upside. So if history is to rhyme, 20 plus percent gains this month. We shall see, October. Uh, continuing, others warn any additional geopolitical tension could add to the existing risk asset pressures. Uh, Telegram channel QCP Capital noted, crypto was hit much harder than oil and equities. We seem to have found some support at the 60,000 level, but further escalation could push up much lower, possibly to the 55,000 level. According to the forecast, Middle East geo... Politics will steal the limelight for now, but the shallow sell-off suggests the market remains well bid for risk assets. This minor setback shouldn't distract from the bigger picture. And also, we have Mikhail Van Day Pop who said that the Bitcoin price flush has reduced the order book liquidity, quoting him here, I think we are fairly close to the low. Maybe have another sweep of the low at 60,000 in reverse from here. Markets went slightly deeper than I expected, but they are still going according to plan. So there you go, my man. All right, family, let's keep it moving. Uh, next story, let's discuss these Bitcoin ETFs. Check this out. First, I want to start with this one. Bitcoin ETFs cumulative inflows are now over $45 billion, the fastest growing ETFs in the history of ETFs, with BlackRock leading the charge. Let's break this down further. Institutional investors appear to have been spooked over rising tensions in the Middle East, with U.S. spot Bitcoin ETF funds clocking almost $243 million in outflows. Not a good day yesterday for the ETFs. The 11 U.S. spot Bitcoin ETFs saw an aggregate outflow of $242 million on Tuesday, the first of the month. According to data from Farside, this was the largest outflow in almost a month. After September 3rd, seeing $288 million leaving the Bitcoin ETFs. Could it be the end of the world? <laughs> it was one... Also, the third largest outflow day over the past five months, reversing an eight consecutive trading day trend of inflows that topped out at almost 500 milli on September 27th. The Fidelity Wise Origin Bitcoin Fund saw the largest outflow, <clears throat> 144 million on October 1st, followed by ARC uh, Bitcoin ETF, which lost 84 million. The Bitwise Bitcoin ETF had an outflow of 32 million, while Venek lost 15.8 million, and Grayscale dropped. 6 million. There was zero flows for Vesco, Valkyrie, Franklin, Wisdom Tree, and Grayscale. BlackRock's iShares Bitcoin Trust was the only one to post positive flows. Go figure. Now go get your shine box, Larry. He's employee of the month, according to Max Kaiser. So uh, long live Lawrence Fink. Recording 40 million for the day. Marking its 15th consecutive day of non-outflow. They're just leading the pack like a madman. Like madmen. Spot Bitcoin prices plunged almost 4,000 in the wake of the Iran missile strike yesterday. The asset fell to a two-week low of 60,300 before bouncing back to where we're currently at above 61,000. Meanwhile, the nine U.S. spot Bitcoin ETF, or I'm sorry, Ether ETFs also registered registered a day of outflows, womp womp, an aggregate of 48 million exit in the products. Grayscale's Ethereum Trust continued to lead the bleed, shedding 26 million yesterday. The Fidelity Ethereum Trust lost 25 million, and with the pair making up the bulk of the losses, and as I read to you earlier, the Ether dominance is all the way down to 13.7%. My question for y'all, how low will the Ether dominance go for this cycle? Do you think we'll tap 12%? Do you think it'll bounce back? I'll let you boy. Our, excuse me. Our next story, let's discuss what's happening in uh, the continent. 
continent of Africa, shall we? Uh, stable coins now 43% of the sub-Saharan African crypto TX volume, according to chain analysis. That's right. Stable coin transactions now comprise nearly half of the total transaction volume of the sub-Saharan Africa, largely due to the currency devaluation, hyperinflation, no joke. Stable coins account for 43% of the sub-Saharan African region's total transaction volume, according to chain analysis's report published today, October 2nd, quoting them here. We have reportedly noted an association between currency devaluation and stablecoin adoption. He added that the key to understanding this association is the direction of the casual arrow, which points from deteriorating purchasing power and local fiat terms to USD stablecoin adoption. Quoting them here, what this means is that it is reasonable to assume that stablecoin adoption will grow rapidly wherever local currencies lose their value whenever, but that stablecoin use can also grow fast outside of these circumstances. And it shows you the some of the countries with the total stable coins received by country from July of 2023 to June of this year. Nigeria, 21.8 billion. South Africa, 13.5 billion. Ghana, almost 4 billion. Kenya, 3.3 billion. Zambia, 2.2 billion. Ethiopia, 2 billion. Uganda, 0.7 billion. Now, crack me if I'm wrong, any African fam here, but is the Dogon tribe from Ethiopia? And could the, the tool reference or weapon referenced in the Bible called the Ark of the Covenant, is that hidden by the Dogon tribe in Ethiopia? I've heard rumors of that. I obviously wouldn't know if it's true, but I'm curious if anyone has any insights. Let me know. The blockchain research firm also reported Nigeria has maintained this position as a top global player for the crypto adoption. The findings revealed Nigeria received approximately $59 billion in crypto transaction volume between July of 2023 and June of 2024. Additionally, about 85% of the value of transfers received in Nigeria are up $1 million, indicating a dominance of smaller retail and professional size transactions according to what it revealed. Nigeria also ranked as the country with the most total stable coins received, which has seen significant devaluation in the Naira. Let me know if I'm pronouncing that currency right there. The banks don't have dollars. The government doesn't have dollars. And even if they did, they wouldn't give them to you, said co-founder and CEO of the African crypto exchange, Yellow Card, Chris Maurice. Shout out, Chris. Uh, they also said, as the Naira depreciates, we can see a rise in stablecoin inflows for transactions under a milli with more pronounced activity during periods of significant currency devaluation. A similar situation is unfolding in Ethiopia, which is ranked the 26th in terms of crypto adoption. Ethiopia is currently Africa's fastest growing market for retail size stables uh, or stable transfers with 180% year over year growth. In July, the Ethiopian Burr ETB lost 30% of its value and the government eased currency restrictions in an attempt to secure international monetary fund support from the IMF. Maurice added the stable coins are a proxy for the dollar. If you can get into USDT or USDC, you can easily swap that into hard dollars elsewhere, which has made stable coins indispensable for companies involved in international trade. Meanwhile, Rob Downs of Financial Services ABSA Group noted a similar trend amongst institutional clients in South Africa, stating the stable coins were the game changer. Quoting him here, our institutional clients are particularly interested in using stable coins as a tool for managing liquidity and reducing exposure to currency volatility. Good point. If their local currency is being hyperinflated, I mean, by 30% or anything significant, you can put it in a stable coin and at least be pegged to the dollar. However, the superior play, in my opinion, just put it in Bitcoin and treat Bitcoin as a savings. Bitcoin will actually go up. It's not a stable coin. Stable coin, you're just guaranteed for it to be the same as the dollar, ultimately. You know what I mean? Additionally, stable coins have displaced Bitcoin as the most popular currency received in South Africa in the recent months. Very interesting. Chainalysis concluded that Africa's real-world crypto use cases carry valuable lessons for the global market before adding that the continent is well positioned to emerge as a global crypto leader. I agree with that sentiment, and I think it will continue to do so because the people need crypto because they can't trust their own government's currency, and that's a damn tragedy. We discussed the African stablecoin. Now let's discuss potential Bitcoin breakout as per crypto analyst Rec Capital. Uh, crypto analyst says Bitcoin due for a breakout after successful macro price retest. Here's his outlook. We're talking about wrecked. That's right. And his newsletter says Bitcoin's looking bullish on the weekly time frame. And in fact, it, we have that $124,000 target there. And could soon make a run to 67 G's to kick off October. 
quoting him here. Bitcoin recently formed a new higher high and performed the weekly close above the late August resistance to 64.3, which you can see in the green, which now means the biddy will try to reclaim this old resistance new support. There may be downside volatility on this retrace, but if Bitcoin is able to weekly close above the green level, then the price will likely rechallenge the downtrending channel top, which you can see in the black by early October. October. As you can see here on the chart. So he's basically sharing with his half million followers. The Bitcoin is also looking bullish for confirming a successful retest of the 58.7 level on the quarterly or three month time frame. So that could be in play. We're not far from that target right now, roughly $3,000 out. So have that on your radar. The analyst also says Bitcoin has had its best September performance in its history, suggesting market strength. Moving forward, uh, quoting him here, don't let a 5% dip distract you from the fact that Bitcoin has experienced its best September of all time by producing a 7% monthly return, where historically it's a September. We finally had a September. We get to rename it. Beautiful. The analyst says the Bitcoin may be on the verge of a parabolic breakout. Send it. This cycle, if it follows a similar time window to the 2020 halving, when minor rewards were cut in half, choppity do. It's 163 days after the halving as of September 30th, which is exactly the amount of days after the halving that Bitcoin broke out from its reaccumulation range in 2020, meaning it's time. We're here, brother. Time to go. It's liftoff. Are you ready? Infinity and beyond. What was his name from the Toy Story? Is it Buzz Lightyear? That's where we're heading, where no man has gone before. My question for the fam, are you guys ready? Now let's dive into our feature story of the day. Bitcoin to $90,000 within the next 60 days, if it mirrors this particular trend. So let's break this baby down, as you can see here in the headline. Bitcoin is back to the red uh, during the time of this live stream, unfortunately, looking at the performance in the daily chart after the close of the unexpectedly bullish September bar. Uh, that's right. Historically, it's a September bear, and we're usually negative. And for the first time, we have finally closed out September Burr as a September 8% in the green. Not too shabby. But will Bitcoin follow the global M2 money supply growth to $90,000? That's the question at hand. Let's break her down. Despite the contraction, traders are confident of what lies ahead, expecting the coin to turn the corner and print higher. Let me know if you agree with that. In a post, this analyst predicts Bitcoin will reach $90,000 within the next couple of months, especially if it continues tracking the global M2 money supply trend. Now, in the analyst findings, the global M2 money supply directly correlates with the Bitcoin price. That means whenever there is an uptick in the global money supply, Bitcoin prices also edge higher. I mean, here's a great illustration uh, right here. Bitcoin in the orange global M2 money supply in the white. Will Bitcoin continue to follow it all the way to 90 Gs? That's my question. Let me know in the comments. Currently, the global liquidity is rising. That's clear. Therefore, if the past correlation leads, there is a high possibility that the coin will not only break above March highs, but also soar to 90,000. As we know, the current all-time highs of price discovery mode is sitting at 73.8, which we achieved mid-March. If we can continue this trend, 90,000 is looking pretty. Let me know if you agree. Uh, presently, the local resistance zone lies at the September 2024 highs at around 65 and 66,000. But if the bulls flow back, lifting sentiment in the prices, Bitcoin may soar higher and higher and higher. In the short term, strong resistance exists between 70 and 72 Gs. A breakout above this level can spark a short squeeze that may see the world's most valuable coin break above the March highs. I'm projecting Bitcoin price discovery this month of October. Do you agree or disagree? Holla. Now, while technical considerations may support the Bitcoin bulls, analysts closely monitor the global M2 money supply and I post one observer explained the global liquidity is rising partly because of the weakening US dollar. Uh, as expected, whenever the Japanese, Chinese, or even the European Union's money supply increases in U.S. dollar terms, the greenback's value tends to decline, leading to a valuation change of the global M2 money supply. And here you're looking at the United States compared to the United Kingdom, Japan, European Union, 
China and Global M2. The uptick in global liquidity in recent weeks, the analyst says, is primarily due to the monetary policy changes in China. And yes, I'm pronouncing it that way purposefully. I don't know why. Sometimes I entertain myself and I lived in China, so I can say it. The People's Bank of China slash interest rates and plans to inject billions to stimulate the economy. Its M2 money supply is larger than that of the United States in USD terms. Subsequently, it is the primary driver of the global M2 money supply expansion. So with the U.S. Federal Reserve easing after suppressing the growth of its M2 money supply from 2022 to curb runaway inflation, Bitcoin and risk on assets will likely benefit. Money printer go, brrr, Bitcoin go, where no man has gone before. It's going up forever, Laura. After slashing rates by 50 basis points in September, Jay Powell, Fed chair, has hinted the central bank might cut rates even more in Q4 of 2024, which would even be that much more bullish because basically the cheaper interest rates get, the more investors can afford to borrow money at an affordable rate to buy more of the Bitcoin or the risk on assets. So you already know. But let me know your thoughts, family. I'm going to read some of these comments out loud and welcome everyone to the Q&A segment of the live stream. 